This one is going to have something to do with what I think of as the new covetables. Ray, who is my wife and not my brother, she was here last time, about a month ago her, had her car broken in. And Ray's car invites breaking in because it's, it's usually loaded with presents sort of to and from grandchildren, beautifully wrapped flowers, things to put flowers in, things of food and for picnics and stuff. We have a picnic every day at the office. And so any passerby that looks, they'd be in, you know, invited to break in. And it happened. They broke in. Well, we usually leave the office about 11 o'clock every night so that they had sort of plenty of time for this maneuver. But everybody in the office, soon it was found out, Everything in Ray's car had been strewn all over the lot. There wasn't much missing. I, I, I think it was a, a beautifully wrapped broken alarm clock that was being sent to a grandchild for further dismantling was the most important <laughs> thing lost, and I regretted this very much. But while going around and picking these things up, I came upon a bolt of cloth. And this was really distressing because it was that kind of a bolt of cloth. It was a bolt of wool. When you take hold of it, well, you can feel the animal wax and oil in it somehow. It a great bolt of cloth. What was shocking about it was that the guy hadn't thought enough of it to take it, if it wasn't. And that somehow or other, he had not a sufficient respect for a bolt of cloth to take it to his girl, his wife, mother, or whatever it is. And this, is this is really a, a, a shocking experience because somehow or another, a bolt of cloth comes under that, that sort of heading of goods, the kind of goods that, that people sort of lay great store in, the kind of things that you have a feeling of tremendous security about. And I don't know if you remember quite sort of what goods are, but this is the way a bolt of cloth looks. It's sort of, it, it's fascinating because it is goods. There's things about cloth, it reminds me of Mrs. Manley of the Manley party sort of crossing the, the desert, uh, Death Valley, when they were abandoned and going to face the Indians. She dressed up with every shred of cloth that she had because she, she couldn't afford to leave it, unlike the guy on the station. The, 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 the way cloth itself looks and packs and feels, it's not sort of just what you do with it and what you sew with it. The cloth, it takes sort of the place of a hank of rope. I, I don't know, we don't see ropes often in hanks anymore. I think clothesline comes in hanks, and it comes in hanks that are sort of linked one to the other, and even that makes a kind of a perfect, you don't want to break into it. You want to keep a hank as it is, or a reel of line. Line is marvelous. We haven't some of the halyard line here, but the great stuff. The way it comes in the package from the haberdasher or from the ship chandler or what it is, the way it wraps sort of the detail. These are, these are goods, it's sort of to be, be thought. A ball of twine. I mean, who would throw away a ball of twine? Because there is something special about that ball of twine before the moment that it's sort of opened up and gotten into. Because as long as it's somewhat of a seal, why it's, it's an object to, to hold on to. Even the way that marvelous iron thing that the twine goes in so the, that the string comes down and in a sense you think it's going on forever. A keg of nails. A keg of nails, when anything was broken into, why in the house somebody would always refer to it as breaking into the keg of nails. Boxes of candy are thought of as kegs of nails. But once into it, sort of the, the beautiful mass of stuff, which like a barrel of apples or a bushel of apples you think it's going to last forever. Because once you open a keg of nails, how can you run, run through it? Reams of paper. Haven't you dreamed of reams of paper? 
It's absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff. What, what you do with a ream of paper can never quite come up to what the paper offers <laughs> in, in itself. There's, there's, there's something about that broken package, you know, where the coroner is torn and that sort of in, invites you to come in. It. And there's something about taking out that first sheet that sort of changes at the boxes of chalk. Now, chalk is never so wonderful as when it sort of lays in there the boxes. The boxes are very kind. It wasn't easy to find a box of chalk these days. I tell you, sawdust and all. A cord of wood is one of the most covetable things that you can imagine at certain times. And again, there was always that moment when somebody eat first, eat into the cord of wood. The first one to take the, the piece out and it would start to tumble and before you knew it, the cord of wood was gone. 